So I'm going to go over some tricks and hints for solving equations here. So this is going to be part one of the series of these videos. So I always find that students have a little bit of trouble in trying to solve an equation. And I will simply begin here with the pure basics, but of course talk about some of the things that can happen and what throws students off. So if I give you an equation, and most of the time people are so used to using x for an unknown, well, I'm going to use all kinds of variables so that it forces you to see that it can be any variable. It doesn't have to be x. It can be m, it can be y, it can be z, it can be capital F, whatever it may be. And in fact, in sciences, that's what it is. There are special variables for each particular quantity. So here is an equation, and if you've done any kind of solving, you won't have a lot of trouble with this. You kind of will know what to do. So let me just start off from the basics. So obviously, we want to solve for m, but we have this 2 in front, which we don't really like. And 2 is, of course, multiplying the m, or it's just telling us that we have two m's here. And if I want to isolate or solve for m, I have to get rid of that 2 in some way. Now, so how do I get rid of a multiplication? Well, I can do it by division. So for instance, here, I can simply divide by 2. And for equations, whatever you do to one side, you always have to do to the other side. So, you know, this isn't really a trick or a hint, but this is just reality of solving. Now, why is the 2 gone? Because 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times m is just m. But for most people, they just simply cancel this off. And they will say that, well, I only have m left now, and 8 divided by 2 is 4, and I solve the equation. So that's the pure basics of trying to solve an equation. And that's all that I wanted to do with that example. But that basic, now, if you change it ever so slightly, for whatever reason, it throws students off. So for instance, if you do not have just a whole number, you know, now let's say you have a decimal number, and it doesn't really matter what's on the other side. It might be another decimal here. As soon as you do this, you know, it sometimes tricks students' minds and they think, okay, this is different. What do I do? Well, this is still exactly the same problem. We still have a variable and then we're multiplying it by a number. And that number in this case turns out to be 2.82. So you do the same thing. You would just simply take the entire number and divide it on both sides. So I would simply do this. Now, this won't be as easy to divide on the right-hand side because it's a decimal. And, you know, so you can take out your calculator and try to do that. So again, this 2.82 just cancels out and I am left with m. And m equals, and if you take the calculator out here, so I have 8.2 divided by 2.82, and I'll get my answer. And you know, if you're solving this for some problem, I'm going to just, you know, leave. Okay, and I'll put dot, 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 because it obviously, as you can see, it continues. You may be asked to round this. So don't arbitrarily round. Okay, maybe ask your teachers what they want it rounded to. Or, you know, maybe it actually states in the question. So the idea here is that the question on top, this one, and this one below it, they follow exactly the same strategy. You have a number, you want to get rid of it, so you divide both sides by it. You know, the other component is now, well, what if all of a sudden these numbers turn out to be negative, okay? Because that may happen. So for instance, if you have, you know, now a negative, okay? And that particular number, let's say, was, you know, the same one, 
but it's negative. I'm going to change the variable just for kicks again to show you that these variables don't matter as much. And now we have this. You know, does this change anything? No, it doesn't change anything. It just means we have a negative number in front. So once again, all you will have to do is just divide both sides, except now you're going to be dividing by a negative number. So here on the opposite side, okay, you will be dividing by a negative number. So the negative and the negative on top, so that will cancel, and then the numbers cancel themselves. And now we already actually know what the answer is because I used exactly the same numbers. So my answer, except now, it's going to be negative 2.9078 and then whatever else it was. So don't get thrown off by the negatives. And the negatives can be on both sides. So I could have just as easily, you know, had something which looked like this and you had also a negative on the opposite side. Well, that's no different. This is exactly the same. You will just simply divide both sides and it will be divided by a negative, it turns out, okay, on both sides. So you will have that and it will give you your answer, except now the negatives cancel here, the number cancels, and now here on the right-hand side, the negatives will cancel as well because negative divided by a negative is a positive. So my answer comes back to be 2.9078 and so on. So please don't get thrown off by these decimals or if there's negatives in front. You know, so uh, another little trick that people get thrown out by is when you have just a negative. So let's say negative y is equal to whatever it may be, okay, let's say 2.9 maybe on the other side. Well, that's no big deal because the negative just means that it's a negative y and don't forget that really you just have a negative one and it's multiplying by the y. So that's what you have there, except in math, we don't write the one in front ever actually. So, I mean, or at least very rarely. So here, well, if you have a negative, Okay, to get rid of the negative, you can again divide by negative one. So, you know, most people won't actually write the negative one on both sides because they know that they can divide by negative one and that will yield, okay, so the ones and negatives cancel and your answer is simply negative 2.9. Okay, and that, as I said, most people, as you get used to these things, they won't really write this step. They won't show it. They just simply will say, okay, why? And then they'll put the negative on the opposite side. So these are little kind of tricks to think about. Now, what else can happen in this simplicity of these equations? Well, what else can happen is that you can have a number not multiplying the variable. You can have a number which is actually dividing. And what I mean by that is, well, for instance, you know, what if I had something like this? N, okay, over four, and I don't know, let's say, and it's equal to seven. So in this case, again, it's a slight little change, but people will get thrown off because it's not four times N, okay, meaning it is not this, where they know that they had to divide, now the four is in the denominator. So what happens? Well, just as you wanted to get rid of this 4 by division, okay, remember you want to get rid of the 4, okay, and we would get our answer. I'll leave it as a fraction here on the right-hand side. You can change it to decimal if you like. Now, on the left-hand side, well, now we, are, we can't be dividing by 4, okay, because we want to get rid of that 4. So if you are working with this, well, now to get rid of the 4 on the left-hand side, I can simply multiply it, okay? So I can multiply by four, but I have to do the same thing on the opposite side, okay? So whenever you have something in the denominator, you just simply multiply, right? So now that four and this four will cancel, and then now you have n is equal to, now it's seven times four, which is 28. 
So again, don't get thrown off just because it might be in the denominator, right? So that's one of the things that can happen. And they may also write it a little bit differently. You know, it, it's always those little small, tiny changes that throw people off. And what I mean by that is if you have n over 4, you know, someone might come along and simply say, well, you know, you have something like this. So this is the same thing, okay? So this is exactly the same thing, okay? You can, again, just simply multiply both sides by 4, and notice the 4s will cancel. 1 times the n is just n. You're still left with 28. So this right here and this right here, how you write it, is irrelevant. But of course, for anybody who's not familiar with working with these things, it will throw them off. And that's okay. You know, so don't feel bad about it. You just have to kind of slowly learn all of these little small nuances between these equations. So that's what happens when you have, you know, something at the bottom. And does it change, for instance, if it's, you know, a, a, a decimal again? No, it doesn't change at all, you know. So if I now, again, I'm going to just keep changing these variables so that you see that it doesn't really matter what you use, not just X. You know, so if I had something like this and if it was 4.3, and even if it was negative in the bottom, right, and then on the opposite side, it doesn't matter what we have. Okay, let's, let's make them, you know, let's say a negative number, let's say something like that. And does this change? No. Again, we have a number in the denominator. Now, this number is a little bit annoying because it's a decimal. So we want to get rid of that number. And in order to get rid of the number, I'm going to multiply okay, both sides by exactly the same thing. So this and this will cancel. Negative divided by a negative is positive. So I'm stuck with my y. Now, yes, you know, now I have a two decimal multiplication on the right hand side. So I can do that. Negative times a negative is a positive. So now, you know, I can take 1.7 multiplied by 4.3 is equal to 7.31. And it is positive because of the fact that I have a positive, I mean, negative and a negative. So that's another little change that may happen. Okay. What else can happen? Well, you can start dealing with fractions right, which a lot of people do not like. And I always say, well, tough. I mean, welcome to the world, I guess, of math and solving equations. I mean, tough, I'm, of course, smiling here because, you know, it's not tough. It sucks if you're a student okay, and you're struggling with this. So, you know, so the last kind of examples that I, I wanted to show is, you know, what if it is indeed, okay, so something like a fraction. Let's say if it's something like this. And on the opposite side, again, it doesn't really matter what we have here. So how do I get rid of this fraction? And by the way, okay, you can write this. Again, it's a small little change, but you sometimes will see it like that, where you notice that the division is actually separating the x as well or whatever variable that you have. Both of these are the same. Okay, So this and this, these are the same and you approach them in exactly the same fashion. So how do you approach it? Well, you approach it in a sense. So here, let me just copy this down. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and bring it back down because they're both exactly the same. And we approach it by, well, imagine, okay, if for instance, you know, there was no four here. Well, what would you do? You would divide by three right? Both sides, you would divide by three. That's what you would do. But we do have, you know, this four. So what we have to do is, well, we're going to divide by, so divide by three. Okay, so that gets rid of this three right here. And now we also have a four in the bottom. Well, that's the same problem as we just had over here. Notice there was a four in the bottom. So to get rid of the four, okay, you basically are going to be multiplying by four. So this will cancel. And of course, you have to do that to both sides. 
So what you're doing is you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal. And for anyone who doesn't remember, they can kind of take a look at one of the videos I made relating to the reciprocal. So the reciprocal, okay, notice we just swapped numerator and denominator, okay? And now we can solve this, so x equals, now 5 times 4 is 20, okay? Don't forget that, you know, it's 5 over 1, okay? And then 1 times 3, okay, is 3, and that's the fraction answer. And if you want it, you can change this back into decimal if that's what your teacher wants, okay? Or just leave it as a fraction or maybe leave it as a mixed number, okay? So that I will leave up to you. So that's kind of the last thing that can happen, that you can have, you know, numerators and denominators. And they can be positive or negative. Well, treat the positive or negative just as you did, okay, in these examples. So, you know, here is kind of the, the final one where, you know, it can get a little bit annoying. What if you have, you know, decimals that you're now dealing with? And let's say, you know, they are negative, so something like this. So I don't know if this can happen. I mean, I guess this can happen in, in real life at, at some point if you're solving equations. Okay, and you have that, and that's also very annoying. You know, so it's not really just a fraction, because fractions really come as whole numbers, right, on top and the uh, bottom. But here I have decimals. So what do I do? Well, you do exactly the same thing. You'll take the reciprocal. So notice that here I'm going to multiply and to get rid of, for example, the 3.2, I will divide by 3.2. And then to get rid of the negative 2.8, I will multiply by negative 2.8. So notice this will cancel with that. And then you have this will cancel with that. Now I have to do the same thing on the opposite side, so please don't forget, right? So now I have this, okay, and I have to solve it, okay? And in order to solve it is, well, now I can multiply 5.1 multiplied by this, okay? And then we're gonna do the division, okay? So let me, so I'll swap the calculator on the other side here so you can see. So 5.1 multiplied by, Okay, and it is um, negative 2.8, okay, so equals. Now, if you'd like to write it down, you can. So that's what you have in the, you know, um, numerator, and then it's going to be divided by the denominator, okay? So here divided by, so 7.3 times 3.2, okay, and that will be 23.36. Now you can do the full division. Okay, between these two. So this would be, so negative 14.28 divided by 23.36 equals, and you know, you get this ugly number. Okay, and again, depends on what your teacher wants you to round to. Now you could have done the whole thing on your calculator, but I just wanted to show you the, the full procedure. So don't get intimidated by these in any way. They're not you know, they're not easy. You have to do them quite a bit of time. But I tried to, in this video, show you, you know, these little tricks and hints for the most basic equation that you can. Okay, and this is kind of the part one of this series of videos. And if you like this one, you can continue on to part two. All right, so thank you for watching. All right, okay, take care. And don't forget, you know, help one inspire a million. See you at the one million journey. Cheers. Bye.